All right, time for the magic to happen. You've gone out and used the rover unit to collect information. Now we want to differentially correct it. So here's we're going to take. We're going to combine our rover data with our base station data and have the differential correction happen and get our super accurate data. So I'm in Pathfinder Office. I'm assuming that you've selected your project file. You've collected the Trimble unit, done your data transfer. Um, and that you actually have used the, the open here to actually look at your file or two that you may have collected. So here I can see some sidewalks that this group has collected. And that looks pretty good. So to do the differential correction, I'm going to go to Utilities, Differential Correction. This wizard's going to come up. And I'm going to select uh, the file that I want to differentially correct here. It's the one I've got here up on the screen. Okay, so I've got 1,323 positions that need to be corrected. And so that's good. I've got some data in there. All right. Now the type of correction that I'm going to do, I have the option of doing code or carrier phrase, carrier phase, or I can use Pathfinder's automatic procedure. And this is what you do, what I suggest doing most of the time. And this picks between the two and decides which is the, the more accurate data. So to use carrier phase when it can, and when it doesn't have any, enough information, we'll switch over to code, code phase. We'll be able to see that in our results. We're just going to use a single base station provider. Okay, so input information, summarizing that, all looks good. Let's go to next. Now I need to select the base station that I'm going to get this information from. Now here you guys are lucky dogs. Uh, you used to have to go to an FTP site, figure out which file you need to download it, do this all manually. Now it's been made way too simple. All I have to do is hit the select button here, and it's going to look at where I'm at, where I'm at on the planet, and pick the base stations that are closest to me, and automate the download process. Now we've done some testing here, and we generally have the most luck from this Rock River, Illinois location, 60 kilometers away. You can read about this integrity index if you like. Uh, anything within about 100 kilometers is probably pretty good. So I'll say OK. It's going to automatically use the reference position from the base station. So that's the exact location of the base station. That's good. Again, for the most part, that default is fine. All right. Where we're going to store the file, in the output folder in my project, and how it's going to create the name. It's going to take that SSF file that you got out in the field and keep that same base name and give it the COR corrected for the extension. So let's hit start. OK. Now I've already downloaded the base station file, so you'll see that happen a little bit um, more slowly where it's actually going out and grabbing that file. Now it's going to do the correction down here. So I notice it says carrier phase processing. So it's doing that first, trying to do the more accurate type of correction. And it's not going to be able to carrier phase process everything. Um, so we're going to see it try to um, code, phase, code phase process what it can. All right, let me get a summary of the results. So I'm going to scroll back up here, and I really want you to look at this in detail. So the carrier phase, we had 1,323 positions. It was able to collect most of, or correct most of those uh, using carrier phase processing. So 1,100 failed to correct about 200. So it had insufficient satellites for those carrier phase processing. Then it did code phase processing of all those points, corrected all of them, and found that for 167, the code solution was better and decided to use that under that automatic process. All right, then let's scroll down. And let's see a summary of the accuracy of the positions. So this is pretty good. Most of my points, 56% of them, are within 15 centimeters. Um, with most of them about 95% within 50 centimeters. I've got a small percentage of points here, and this may show up at editing, that are within one or two meters. So that's nice. That's what you want to get. This is a lot of very accurate data for our mapping. All right, that's it. We've finished differential correction. I can hit close. If I want, uh, I can open the corrected file here and see what that looks like. And this would be the slight correction that I'll see here. All right, next step is to export this to ArcInfo or ArcGIS and make a new shapefile. Well done.